There's um, two passages this morning. Um, first is from Isaiah 9, verses 2 to 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you, and as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when div dividing the plunder. For as in the day of the Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment um, rolled in blood will be des um, destined for burn burning, will be the fuel for a fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. And from that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The second part is from Luke 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come among, upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child, and in her old age, and she was, who was said to be barren in, in her six months. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Lucy. <clears throat> so we're going to be thinking about Mary's faith this morning. Um, and both those readings. Um, so in the first one, we see of a long promised uh, Messiah, Saviour, and, and in the second one we see uh, how that is fulfilled. Um, now, I, I'm told that when, ed when news editors are looking for um, you know, stories that will um, be you know, real hot topics, um, the things that will get the most uh, clicks or sell the most newspapers, um, anything to do with sex, royalty, or religion will, will you know, serve that, will we'll get lots and lots, sell lots of newspapers, get lots of clicks. Uh, and if the three can be combined in any way, then brilliant. Well, this uh, very familiar Christmas story, uh, it does all three, doesn't it? Young woman mysteriously falls pregnant before her marriage. Uh, she claims that the baby is God's. Uh, and not only that, but he's going to be Israel's promised king. What's going on? Is she, gonna, is she trying to cover up a scandal? Has she gone mad? Or is she telling the truth? Well, let's pray uh, as we think about that. Father, we thank you so much for this uh, incredible story that uh, encourages our faith um, and just reveals to us how, uh, how you came into the world 
to save us. We pray this morning that you would be speaking to us, building us up, and helping us to follow you with a faith like Mary. Amen. So, as I said, uh, we're going to be thinking about Mary's incredible faith this morning. Um, And I hope that as we do that, we'll be encouraged to trust um, God more. Um, As we come come face to face with the assurance from uh, verse 37 there that we heard, uh, that no word from God will ever fail. I think that's really the the kind of phrase that stuck out to me uh, this week as I've been thinking about that. But let's set the scene a little bit as we, um, as we start. So the scene begins with Mary. Um, she is alone. Uh, imagine what you like. She may have been, maybe she was baking bread in the kitchen. Maybe she was uh, out working in the field. We're not quite entirely sure. Uh, but a booming voice brings her to, uh, from whatever she was thinking about, to the reality that there's an angel stood before her. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And at first she's uh, confused and afraid, uh, as you might be. Uh, Who is this angel? Why is he here? What kind of message might he have for me? Uh, Has he got the right house? But he says the familiar phrase in verse 30. Oh, there's my clicker on. That's it. Well, I'll read you verse 30, and hopefully it'll appear in a second. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. And, and that, it's often pointed out that, that um, if angels have to proceed what they say with those words, do not be afraid, then they, as they often do in the Bible, um, clearly their presence is so awesome that it frightens whoever they're speaking to. Um, and, and so, actually, this is a very familiar scene in the Bible. Angels appearing, uh, saying, do not be afraid. Um, and often there's an announcement, um, interestingly, we look through the Old, Old Testament, uh, an announcement that a, a baby is coming. But this baby, Mary's baby, is not any old baby. As we heard, and it, we hear echoes of Isaiah 9. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. This baby is the long-awaited Messiah, who is actually first promised to David uh, through the prophet Nathan in, back in 2 Samuel. He said something similar. Verse 13 there at the bottom. Um, I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So, so there's so much context behind this. Uh, the, the Israelites uh, praying for hundreds of years for somebody to save them when they were um, expelled from their own country, carted off to another land. They cried out for God to save them, to restore the kingdom. So some, such a figure had been anticipated for hundreds of years. Uh, and this encounter with Mary shows us firstly that God was about to fulfill the promise he had, uh, he had made to previous generations. But secondly, it gives us certainty that he will fulfill his promises to us. Um, as we wait for what, as Christians, we call the second advent, for Jesus to return, for that uh, day of judgment, uh, for the new heaven and the new earth, for, for the day when all of our tears will be wiped away and everything will be made new we can be confident that God will keep his promise to us too. Imagine the person waiting in the restaurant, waiting for their date. Uh, The girl in the cafe who wrote her number on a a coffee cup. I wonder if that happens in real life. Uh, Eight o'clock has been and gone. Is she coming? Is she just running late? Uh, Well, that's not what it's like for God's people as we're waiting. We have total confidence because we've seen that God always fulfills his promises. His word will never fail. We know that he will come. And so that as we wait in Advent, we can have total confidence. And Mary gives us uh, a bit of a blueprint or an example um, for the kind of faith that we can look towards having for ourselves. And uh, try to grow in ourselves. So we're going to look at three things this morning. Uh, Her thoughtful faith, her humble faith, 
and her costly faith. Um, so just having a look at her thoughtful, thoughtful face to begin with. Um, in response to the angel's announcement about this long-awaited baby, her response is firstly thoughtful. Verse 34, she says, uh, she asks the angel a question, how will this be since I am a virgin? And, and I just love, when we, when we kind of think about that, when we think about the whole account here, uh, Mary's response isn't so much a doubt you know, when she says, well, how will this be? It's not like a doubtful, well, I don't believe this. Um, it's more of a kind of a, a thoughtful questioning inquiry. She knows and trusts that God will fulfill his promises. Um, and from that kind of secure foundation, she asks her questions. Um, we, we see a similar kind of inquisitiveness in the next chapter when uh, Jesus is born and we see that she treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart when the, the shepherds come uh, and speak of their uh, vision with the angels. It's a great model and example for us to follow, to be inquisitive. Um, it, she shows us that we can both, um, we can both believe uh, even when we don't have the answers, but we can also uh, be inquisitive uh, about those things which we don't have the, the full picture. Even if we don't have all the answers, um, it's possible to believe. Um, as Christians, we're not called to blind faith, but to thoughtful faith. Now, I don't believe anybody in this room will have had an angel turn up on their doorstep and tell them they're going to have God's baby. Um, but uh, if we believe the Christian faith, then we do we do believe uh, that Mary did, don't we? Uh, and that goes against the grain in our culture today, believing things that we can't see or that, that don't seem possible. Now, um, apparently, there is a few species of reptile and insect um, which uh, very, very rarely have something which you might call like an immaculate conception. Very interesting. Um, I'm sure there's a few people that know a lot more about it than me uh, here. But... Um, as far as we know, Mary was not part lizard, was she? Uh, immaculate conceptions don't happen normally. <laughs> um, so how can a reasonable, intelligent person who believes in science believe that, the vir that a virgin could have a baby? Well, um, we're actually lucky that at the beginning of uh, the first chapter one uh, of Luke, um, Luke, he actually tells us uh, why he's written this gospel. And I think there are some things that we can, some hooks that we can kind of, things that we can latch onto here from what Luke says. Um, oh, what's going on? Here we go. He says, uh, Luke says at the, right at the beginning of, of chapter one, he says, um, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an, an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Now, Luke was a man of facts. Uh, he was a man of careful investigation. He sought the truth. Um, and we know, actually, from, from both Luke and Acts, the other book that he wrote, um, he's really meticulous and ordered in the way that he presents dates and historical information. Um, and, and we know that um, from other sources outside of the Bible that he gets all of these dates and things right. He's very meticulous, very concerned to tell the truth and be accurate. Um, and in fact, scholars think possibly, based on the, the date that, that he probably wrote um, Luke, he, there's a good possibility, from other things we know as well, that he could have even interviewed Mary as he researched uh, for his gospel. Um, and one, thing else you should, one more thing you should know about Luke, uh, we know from Paul's letters that he was a doctor. Now, when it comes to the virgin birth. We've had many medical advancements in the last 2,000 years, haven't we? Uh, but they did know back then how babies were made. <laughs> so if we piece some of these things together, we've got to assume that Luke, who writes this gospel, he knew how far-fetched this sounded, and yet he believed it to be true. He wouldn't have included it if he thought it was an unnecessary detail that risked jeopardizing um, what he had to say, unless he really thought it was true. And actually, uh, we've got some more Old Testament uh, scripture that we can look to. Back in Isaiah chapter 7, just a few pages back from the other uh, 
verse that we, verses that we looked at. Uh, Isaiah says, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Hundreds of years before Jesus was born. Could Mary believe that it was possible for, us, for God to work in this way? Do we believe that we can base our understanding of the world, of God, of our salvation, uh, on something that science says is not possible by current, our current understanding? Oh, we're not called to blind faith, but thoughtful faith. And I saw this uh, quote on Twitter um, the other day, which I thought was interesting. Christian be- Christians believe in the birth of Jesus. Atheists believe in the virgin birth of the universe. Choose your miracle. (laughs) Actually, we all have faith in something, don't we? Uh, uh, Even the foundations of science, the most basic things we believe, they're not not based on facts. They're based on, on faith, in theories. So perhaps if you're here today, you're on a journey. You're still weighing up this Jesus thing. I'm so glad you're here. And I'd love to say to you, be open, consider what you see and hear. And, you know, I'd love to have a conversation with you. I'm sure it would be the highlight of my week to talk about Jesus with you. Um, And for the rest of us, uh, keep asking questions, uh, uh, all the while growing in confidence that no word from God will ever fail. When we do that, we'll be challenged and encouraged as uh, as we learn to follow Jesus together. Uh, So that's the first thing. Uh, Mary's faith faith was thoughtful. Uh, Secondly, we see her humble faith. Um, Verse 38, Mary says, in response to what the angel said, she says, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Um, Now, Mary's uh, faith here, it stands in stark contrast to Zechariah, if we're going to go back to the beginning of this chapter, we see uh, Gabriel appearing to Zechariah. And uh, he was an elderly man. He was a priest serving in the temple at, the, at Jerusalem at, at that moment, uh, the, you know, the very center of the Jewish faith. So religiously speaking, you could not get more respectable, much more respectable than Zechariah. And yet he questions the news that Gabriel brings him. And, and, you know, we see as a result, he, he kind of, he, he, has, he doubts it. And yet, and, and so God um, uh, presses the mute button on him until, uh, until John the Baptist is born. Whereas Mary, she was this peasant girl from an unheard of town out in the sticks of Israel. And she said yes to God. We've got no reason to believe that she was particularly important or special. And yet God saw her heart and her faith in him and chose this humble young woman. And and she does show this remarkable acceptance of God's call on her life. However unbelievable it might sound. And it comes from a faith and acknowledgement that God is in control and can do all things. Um, this week uh, coming in our family, we're, um, it will be marking or remembering that it, it's a year since um, Annie's mum passed away. Um, and, and as I've been thinking about Mary's humble faith, um, I'm reminded of, of Rachel, uh, her faith. Uh, she received um, a cancer diagnosis just, just short of three years ago. And um, we knew from the beginning that, humanly speaking, there wasn't going to be much to do beyond extending her life. Um, and we prayed. But it was, it was so inspiring to see her own response to God in the face of these uh, very different, life-changing circumstances. Now, of course, she had her off days and her wobbly moments. Um, But she she just displayed the most amazing faith as she faced this battle. Um, She did it with peace um, and a rock-solid confidence that God was going to bring her through this trial and to him in glory. 
Um, and she became quite the evangelist. Um, as she kind of lost her fear to talk to all kinds of people about her faith in Jesus. And I know of at least one person who came to faith. But it was amazing that she could accept what was laid in front of her because she knew that God was in control and that he loved her. And that's inspired me to look for that same humble, dependent faith, which, which accepts whatever God's plans are, whether they feel like um, battles or they feel like blessings, just like Mary and just like Rachel. So we've seen how Mary's faith is thoughtful, how it's humble, and um, finally, costly. Um, so saying yes to, to, to God in this case for Mary, it, it came with a risk. And we come back to where we started right at the beginning. Uh, who would believe this scandalous story? You know, I, I don't know what she was thinking at the time, but she was she thinking, was, is, Mary, is Joseph going to leave me? Uh, and in Mary's day, the punishment um, for adultery by the, the, you know, the law, technically, was death. Punishment by death. And often it wasn't the case that the full force of the law was applied, but it was a possibility. And yet in spite of this, she has the faith that, that whatever work God has begun in her, I mean, he is literally going to bring it to birth in this case. But it will be worth the cost. Her faith was costly. And the truth is that following Jesus is costly in all kinds of ways. Um, we know that, that persecution against Christians um, is on the rise worldwide. Um, and even in the West, where we often think of this being an easy place to live as a Christian, as, as Christian culture fades away, we find ourselves more and more sidelined when we stand up for our faith, when we insist on things like the, the uniqueness of Jesus as our Savior, when we have different ethics for sex and relationships, Holding fast to the truth can be costly. But we also can encounter the cost of discipleship in lots of different other areas in our life, as we've been thinking about the Sermon on the Mount, haven't we, um, the last few months. And maybe you've had those times um, when you felt God prodding you to give yourself and your resources in ways that are uncomfortable. But you feel that sense now, this is what the Lord wants me to do. Uh, a couple of examples. Ooh. I don't know, whatever the next slide is, if that could come up. Oh, there we go. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, one of the obvious things that, that come, comes to mind are our financial resources. Having costly faith with those. But um, similarly, you know, in a society when we're so busy, it can feel... Um, our time is our most costly resource. Having, uh, giving our time to help somebody who's in need or supporting a ministry in the church can feel so costly when we've got so many of our own pressing issues that we want uh, to, to spend our time with. But denying ourselves, uh, sometimes, even often, and our desires and seeking to be obedient where God calls us to, that's costly faith. Uh, Mary risked her reputation by saying yes to God. How many times have I thought about my reputation more than being obedient to God? How many times have I bottled it when uh, there's been an opportunity to talk to somebody about Jesus uh, who doesn't yet know him? Or when I've wondered if God might be saying something, but I've, I've been too scared to say it because I might look like a fool. I was praying for somebody recently at an event, um, and, and I just felt, I felt that, um, that, that God might be saying something to me. So I, I shared, um, it was a Christian person, um, and I kind of reluctantly shared what I, I wondered what God might be saying to him. Um, and this big burly guy who was actually quite a bit taller than me, um, which I don't, I don't often come across, um, <laughs> uh, he began to cry. Um, and you know, I carried on praying. Afterwards, you know, I said, um, afterwards, he, he actually said to me, you know, I, I actually, I'm not really sure that God speaks to us. In the, you know, he came from a different theological kind of tradition. Um, 
<laughs> but he said, but that was exactly what I needed today, what you said to me. Following Jesus is costly. It could have all gone wrong for Mary. What God was asking her could you know, have sent her life completely down the pan. And, and it's, you know, it's good when we're, we're, we're living to think with our head. But we also, I don't know, we, we also need to think with our faith. <laughs> Mary chose to trust God and his plan, he, that he would lead her through it. So we don't need to be afraid to make costly decisions because we can know that, that, that God will lead us through if we feel like he's calling us to something. That's one of the reasons why we, can be, why we should be continually reminding ourselves of, of the basic message of Jesus because it's all about the cost he paid for us. When we daily remind ourselves of his love and sacrifice, it will soften our hearts towards him. It will cultivate a desire to step out in faith and to follow him regardless of the cost. So we've looked at those three things. Uh, Mary's thoughtful faith, faith, her humble faith, her costly faith. Why don't we just stand as we kind of think about praying and, and responding to God this morning. Um, if you're able, do stand and just, um, let's just wait for a moment. And there's a few things that perhaps we might want to, uh, a few different ways we might want to respond. So firstly, uh, perhaps if you're um, here, you're still thinking about faith and um, Jesus but you know that I, you know, I've to speak to so many people who, who they, there's, they come to church regularly, but they're not, just not quite sure yet. And I wonder if, if, there's, if there's any people here who, who just want, they know they need to take a step of faith, but they don't know how to do it. Let's just pray that God gives you help this morning to do that. Perhaps there are circumstances in our lives where we, actually they're very challenging or maybe very daunting. We feel that God's called us to this you know, great thing that our heart longs for, but we just don't know if we can do it. Maybe we need to be reminded of the costly faith that we should step out and take that cost. So Father, each of us here as we work out what it means to follow you, Lord, I pray that we would take those steps of faith, inspired by uh, Mary's wonderful faith. Holy Spirit, would you come and fill us, turn our hearts towards you, and change us. Amen.